God, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm excited to come and worship God with you. And so, as we open the service tonight, let's just stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Let's give God praise and thanks for this wonderful day, for all that the Lord has done in our life. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for giving us grace to walk with you, to serve you, and to have a relationship with you, Lord God. My prayer, God, is that you will bless this service tonight, accomplish your will, touch each and every heart. Move and bless tonight as we sing and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we'll sing one hymn tonight, and then she's going to lead us in some songs as we sing together. Amen. that we can feel like moving on feel like traveling on for Jesus there is hope in Jesus tonight there's a heaven prepared for us and that's our heavenly home and we pray that God will guide us and lead us safely all the way there amen thank you Jesus all right she's gonna sing us some chorus tonight the, the words not gonna be on there but let's sing and worship God together Blessings are flowing tonight. And there's joy, joy, joy in my soul. That Jesus made everything right. I gave him my own tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why. 
magnify you. We just want to thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and worship you together. We can lift up your name in praise. We can lift you up, oh God, and ex exalt you above all. We can give thanks to your holy name in praise and in worship. And now, Lord God, we look to you to have your way. Bless and accomplish your will tonight. We bless you in Jesus' name. good to be in the house of the Lord yeah. on a Sunday night where we can sing and give thanks and praise to the Lord and the scriptures the song said he has made me glad you know God can put joy in your heart and put peace in your life he can put happiness and a sound mind he can give you a sound mind to where you can you can think clearly and you can understand the love of your heavenly father amen God is wonderful to each and every one of us. And so that's what we're here tonight to do, to worship Him, to praise Him, and to give thanks to Him. And I like the first song, it says, Feel Like Traveling On. Feel Like Going On for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we just want to, you know, everything can happen in our life, but we just got to have that feeling. I'm heading for somewhere better. My home, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. 
just passing through for a short time, however long that is, that short time is. But when it's over, there's an eternity, and there's God, and there's Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Amen. Amen. To see Jesus face to face and to be with Him forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you going to sing us a song? She's going to sing us a song. I don't know if she didn't say yes or no, but <laughs> we'll just volunteer her to sing. We'll let her sing us a song tonight. <laughs> All right. Just enjoy the worship.
God praise tonight. Give God glory and give Him all the honor. God is wonderful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. And this time we receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. We thank you for your giving. Marvin, would you help us tonight? And would you please pray, sir? I mean, thank you. Father, thank you for this portion of service. Father, bless the giver according to his giving in Christ's name. Amen. 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 trust you, Mark. You want my keys? <laughs> You'll probably take off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all want to hear another song? Popular demand? No? <laughs> All right. All right, well, if she's going to sing, we're going to have to join her now. That means you have to clap and just rejoice. We're in church tonight, right? And we're here to worship God. It's all about Him. And so as she sing. Let's just um, clap and just get in and worship God together. Amen.
thank you, Jesus, that we know who we belong to. Amen? Amen. We belong to God, you know. God is the one that created all of us. I was thinking about it the other day, the scripture. I know I shouldn't say it. We shouldn't voice everything we think, right? <laughs> it's not good. But I was thinking about how in the Psalms, God said that, you know, all our members are numbered. You know, speaking about our fingers and our toes and, and our eyes, you know, God, God it keeps a record of everything. And in the scripture, Jesus even said, he said, the very hair of your head are all numbered. That's how much God care about people, right? Man, we don't even number our own hair. But God cares. He knows exactly, you know, how many hair we have on our head. And he said also, he said, not, not one sparrow will fall to the ground without your heavenly Father knows about it. And so he wants us to know the care and the love that God has for each and every one of us. Amen? And so always remember that, that God cares about you. I know as sinners, you know, we really didn't understand the love of God, but when you become a Christian, that's when you really understood that, you know, if God loved me when I was unlovable, now that I'm his child, how much now he cares and loves me. Amen? And so with that, I want to read to you tonight from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, we'll read verses 62 through 66. Now the next day, the following, that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure unto the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. And I want to use verse 65 as our text for tonight. Pilate said, Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. And I want to use that, this passage of Scripture and some other Scriptures tonight. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach on a message entitled, Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Marvin, would you please pray, sir? Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each of all their prayers. Father, search each one's heart according to the end of this for me. Father, mold us and shape us into what you want us to become. Let us understand your will and do all things pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Let's look to the Word of God as we preach about Unstoppable tonight. And uh, y'all know, without me telling you, and if you don't know by now, you should know, <laughs> that the lifelong mission of the devil or Satan is to stop God and to stop anyone that is trying to serve God. He wants to deceive, he wants to distract, and he wants to keep us from being what God wants us to be. And uh, he had tried many, many times to stop the Lord and the work of God and uh, the things that God wanted to do. And so this passage of scripture that I read to you there from the Gospel of Matthew, the second to last chapter, it deals with, uh, we will say like, it's, you know, it's like one of the most important thing and the one most important event in Christianity, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the death and burial and resurrection of Christ. And so here that I read to you this part, he said, now the next day that, that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together to Pilate saying, sir, we remember. Now when it said that deceiver, they're accusing Jesus of being a deceiver, right? And so they said, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, 
after three days I will rise again. And so they did not want Jesus to rise again from the dead. And so they were trying to do everything they could to keep him in the tomb. They were trying everything they could to keep him down, but the Bible said they can't stop him. Right? You can't stop what God wants if God wants to do it. Right? And so they're trying, and so they came to Pilate and said, Pilate, just give us some guards, and we will take a massive stone, we will roll it over the tomb, and so that no one can go in or come out, and we will have these Roman, gar- Romans, Roman guards out there to protect this dead body inside of the tomb. And the Bible said, Pilate said, go ahead, you have a watch, make it as sure as you can. But as we read on in the scripture in chapter 28, we'll read a little bit more in, in chapter 28 verses 1 through 6. He said, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn uh, towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And so this here shows us uh, this wonderful story about Jesus Christ uh, as he came to earth uh, to be born of a virgin and raised up in the city of Bethlehem. And as he grew up and began to preach the word of God and began to share with us uh, the things that pertain to God, we know that the Pharisees and the religious people of those days did not like Jesus. And everyone that will teach and preach truth uh, will come under such persecution because not everybody want to hear the truth. Not everybody liked the truth, and so they think, well, if we can take Jesus and crucify him on the cross, maybe we can shut him up. Maybe we can get rid of him. Maybe we can not hear about him any longer. All we have to do is kill him. But even after they killed him, they were still afraid of him, right? And so they said, okay, we'll put him in a tomb now. Let's put some guards around there to guard him, to protect him. But the Bible said that man, or the Bible said that as the guards were there watching the tomb and the guards were there protecting this dead man on the inside, God began to move. Amen. God sent his angel and the angel rolled the stone away. And I'm here to tell you tonight, man may try a lot of things to stop God. Satan may try to stop God. But if you just give God a chance in your life, he can roll away all the stones that the enemy will try to place on you you know satan wants to destroy people we know that he wants to keep us bound and keep us imprisoned to his lies and his deceptions that our life cannot change or our life can't be better or we can't do anything for god or we cannot be happy or whatever it may be whatever lie he may try to bring trying to place that stone on you to press you down but thank god tonight that jesus christ rose from the dead amen he came out of that grave and he showed us that no matter how much man stop they can't stop that no matter how much man try they can't stop god amen they can't stop god he is unstoppable god is unstoppable you say what about my life preacher god can become unstoppable in your life if you give him a chance if you give him a chance If you say, Lord, I know you died. Let me all know Jesus died on the cross. Amen. If you say, Lord, I know that you died on the cross for my sins. And I know, Lord, that you were buried just like the scripture said. I read it to you from the Bible. But I know also, Lord, on the third day that you rose again. Amen. That's the key right there. Jesus rose again from the dead. No other man has ever risen from the dead but Jesus. He came out of that tomb. He came out. And the Bible said when he came out, he proclaimed. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. God have power tonight to help you. God have power tonight to work miracles in your life. God have the power 
power to change your circumstance and to change things in your life, but it takes you surrendering to God and say, Lord, I know what you did for me. I know, God, all the things that you have accomplished, and I'm just giving myself to you. I'm surrendering my life to you, and I will ask of you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Become my personal Lord and Savior. Take away my sins. Take away my fears. Take away all those things in my life that are oppressing me and keeping me bound like a prison in my mind. I can't seem to break free, but just like you rose from the dead and came out free, Jesus can set all of us free tonight. Amen? He can do something good for you if you give him a chance because he is unstoppable. You see, Satan has been trying to stop the Lord from the very, very beginning. You all know how the devil became, how Satan became the devil, right? Or Lucifer became the devil. The Bible tells us that he tried to stop God. He tried to overthrow God. We'll read a little bit of the scripture from the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 17. And this is Isaiah writing to us in a prophetical sense and revealing to us what happened in the very beginning before God ever created man. Satan was the, he was a, he was the ruler. God had created him to be, God had created many angels and the earth was created, beautiful place, it was inhabited. And the Bible said the angels were the one that, that, that had dominion over this earth before man was ever created. And Lucifer, the light bearer, the one that the Bible referred to him as the anointed cherub, he was created to rule this world. That, not this one, but the one before this one, before man was ever created. And God had given him a lot of power. But as you study different scriptures, you will see that uh, he allowed himself to be lifted up in his pride. And uh, as he was lifted up in his pride, he began to usurp his authority and try to abuse his power. And the Bible referred to him as a thief and a murderer and that he was a, he was a merchant. He was over the merchant and all the stuff the scripture revealed to it. I'm not getting into all of it tonight. But it's, the Bible said he controlled all those things. No wonder why he's still doing the same thing today, right? He's controlling all the merchants all the, and, and different things of the world. All the, the structures that run the world, he's behind a lot of it. Amen? Because that's what he did before he fell. You know, he was, a, he was a, over all the business of all the things that happened. And so when he decided that he was going to stop God, the Bible said in verse 12 in, in, in Isaiah chapter 14, he, he began to reveal to us, he said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the worlds as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoners? And so the scripture is showing us that from the very beginning, Satan tried to stop God. He's trying to overthrow God and to take over. But you see, God is unstoppable. Amen. God is unstoppable. No amount of angels can stop God. No amount of the whole world can unite together and it still can't stop God. Amen. All the kingdoms of the earth can come together and try to wage war against the Lord and they can't stop him because he is unstoppable. And so tonight I'm preaching about God being unstoppable and if, he, if the world can't stop him, the angels can't stop him, no one can stop him, uh, right? And so no one can bring anything against God to destroy him or anything like that. Then that lets us know that we who are his servants are in good shape. Amen. If 
we that believe in God, that serve God, that trust God, are in a good position because God will stand by us and God will help us and God will defend us and God will work on our behalf and we don't have to worry about any man trying to hinder in God's progress in our life as long as we are determined to give God a chance. Amen? How many of y'all want to give God a chance tonight? Don't quit on the Lord. He hasn't quit on you. Don't give up on God. He hasn't given up on you. Satan can't stop him. He's a liar and the father of all lies. Amen? He's a liar and the father of all lies. And so no matter what he speak uh, 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 and what, what fearful thing he has placed in your heart and your mind to let you know that he can do this and he can do that to your life, he can't do anything to you unless God allows him. He can't do anything to you unless you allow him. And so tonight's message is uh, if he's been trying, and Lord knows he tries, amen. He's been trying and, and trying to bring you down and trying to keep you under and oppress you in your mind and trying to steal your joy and your peace and your happiness and everything. My invitation to you is to bring it to Jesus, amen. Come to Jesus, amen. Surrender it all to the Lord. He can help you tonight. God can help you. If the grave couldn't hold him back, you can rest assured no one else can. Amen? If, it, if death couldn't stop him, if hell couldn't take him captives, if, if the world couldn't, couldn't, couldn't hold back Jesus, you can rest assured tonight no one can. He's just waiting for you and me to say, Lord, work in my life. Lord, I'm surrendering my heart and my mind to you. Lord, I will give you all my problems. I will cast all my burdens upon you. I will give you all my cares and I will just take all these things that are eating at me and destroying me and, and destroying me from within. I will take it all Lord and cast it at your feet and give it to you because I know God you can help me. Amen. I know God you can do something in my life. I know that God can work in my heart and my mind. He can take everything out of my life that is unfit and, uh, and that's not good for me tonight. He can destroy it. He's unstoppable. The only one that can stop God, or the only thing that can stop God from working in us, or the only one, is us. Right? If It's our unbelief and our lack of trust in the Lord. But tonight, let God help you. Amen? Amen. Let God help you in believing. As our Bible reading said there in verse 66, he said, So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. In other words, they, they put a stone over the mouth of the sepulcher and they take that Roman stamp of approval and seal it. Once that stamp was on there, nobody can touch it because the Roman government will crack down on them in a heartbeat. And so they put that stone, put that seal on there, and then they set these guards, these Roman soldiers, to watch. <laughs> right? But I like what it said in chapter 28, verse 2. He said, And behold, there was a great earthquake. Right? And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. God can roll back the stone. Amen. The devil, it may seem like Satan is trying to roll the stone over your life. Have you ever been there before? A stone of, of discouragement. Anybody been there? A stone of doubt. Right? A stone of lack of confidence in God. A stone of low self-esteem. I'm nothing. I'm not worthy of anything. Who told you that? That's a lie. Amen. A stone of, I can't do this. A stone of, I can't go forward. I can't be anything in my life. Let the angel roll the stone away tonight. Amen. Let the angel roll the stone away tonight. How, how can the angel roll the stone away? By us coming to God and say, Lord, take all these burdens away. Take it all away, Lord Jesus. I cast it. He said, casting all your care upon him for he care it for you. Amen. God cares about us tonight. And so let God roll the stone. He said in verse 2, he said, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. So whatever stone it may seem that Satan been rolled or have rolled upon your life, whatever thing he has tried to place in your way to hinder you tonight, I invite you to come to Jesus. I invite you to come to the one that defy all, uh, all the things that the enemy have brought against him and triumph over them. I invite you to give it all to Jesus tonight. He is still the answer for every problem in our life. And he can help us in every situation because God is 
unstoppable. Amen. The Lord is absolutely unstoppable. Let's read a little bit of scripture in the New Testament now. I read to you from Isaiah. Let's look at um, Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. He said, The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. They're trying, trying to threaten Jesus. Get out of here because Herod will kill thee. Well, listen to the way Jesus responded. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, now, a fox is a little thing, right? <laughs> you know, Herod is this great big king sitting on his throne. I don't know how big he was. He could have been a little guy. I don't know. But he had all this authority and power and everything sitting on his throne trying to threaten Jesus. And Jesus said, go tell that fox. Behold, I cast out devils. So thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Jesus can cast out devils. He, can cast, he still cast out devils. He said, behold, I cast out devils and I do cures. Today and tomorrow, Jesus can cure also. Amen. He can cure. I'm praying for a miracle on my right arm because I can't even lift it. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I can lift it, but it's very painful in my, my cuff, whatever. Wrote, you know, I don't know where I injured it. Maybe I grabbed Marcus wrong or something. I don't know. I'm blaming it on him. But, <laughs> but I'm praying because I believe God can heal. Amen. I believe God can heal. I'm thanking him for healing me. And as he said, I cast out devils and I do cures. Today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected or completed. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the following day, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Amen. It cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Jesus can still do cures tonight. And even though men try to stop him, even though they try to threaten him, get out of town, we don't want anything to do with you, or, you, or, or, or the authorities are going to come down to you, he said, ah, they can't do anything to me. <laughs> they can't do it. They can't stop me. I mean, they can't stop me. And so the message tonight is unstoppable. The Pharisees couldn't stop him. The Sadducees couldn't stop him. Herod couldn't stop him. The people couldn't stop him. No one can stop him. Amen. He is God. He was God in the flesh. He still is God. And he's here tonight. His presence already felt in this service. And so whatever it is tonight that you have need, we serve an unstoppable God. We serve a God that can help each and every one of us tonight. We serve a God that can work miracles. He can still do cures. Amen. He can cure us of anything. Whether it's a root of bitterness that's in our heart. Whether it's unbelief. Whether it's something that, that causes us to, to not be what God wants us to be. Jesus can still cure us from all those things. Amen. You say, preacher, I'm so fearful I can't even sleep in the nighttime. Jesus can take those fear out of your life. I don't have a problem going to sleep. Amen. I hit that bed, I'm gone. <laughs> you don't have to take, it don't take very long at all before I'm gone because I don't worry about all these things. I know when I pray and I put it all in the hand of God, God will take care of me, amen? God will take care of me. God can give me sweet sleep in the nighttime. He said he giveth his beloved rest. God can give us sweet sleep tonight. Rest in the Lord. He can give cures he said, I do cures. What do you need to be cured of tonight? Some uncertainties in life. Some bad news that have been troubling you. Some unholy feeling that have been eating at your heart. Jesus can cure it all tonight. Yeah. Amen. He's still God. He's still that God. Amen. He's still that God that can help. He's still that God that can touch. He's still that God that can cast out evil spirits and demons and, and that God that can cast out all these un, unholy things in our life. He's still that God and no one can stop him. And so tonight I'm preaching to you, come to the Lord. Amen. Come to the Lord. The altar call. You need Jesus? Come on down to the altar. Whatever you need tonight, at, at that time when we get ready to pray, just come to the Lord and say, Lord, I've heard thy word that the, 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 the grave couldn't stop you and, 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 the, and the powers that be couldn't stop you. And Lord, I have some needs in my life. And I'm going to come to God and let God do it. Throughout the scriptures, we see over and over that God cannot be stopped. And so as we look to the Lord and trust in Him, we see that He is a God that can help us in every situation. As He talked about also in Matthew 16, 18, He said to, the, to, to Peter, He said, And I say unto thee, 
that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we know what a church is, right? We are the church, right? We are the church, not this building. Thank God for the building. Thank God for your conditioning in the building, right? But the church is you and me. And God said, I will build my church, which means he will build our life. He will build our life. And he said, Satan and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you want to have a strong life in God, if you want to have a strong relationship with God, if you want to have a genuine, rela genuine relationship with God, no one can stop you. He said, I will build, come to me, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God is unstoppable tonight. The only one that can stop him is you and me. And so if you are not determined to stop God, if you don't want to stop God, then come to him. Amen. Come to him. Open up your heart to the Lord. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He rose again from the dead. I read it to you in the scripture. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended back into heaven. And scripture teaches us that he's seated on the right hand of God Almighty. Amen. Father and Son, just sitting there waiting for us to come to them. Amen. Waiting for us to receive them into our life. And so tonight, come to the Lord. Whatever you have need of, no one can stop God from working in your life. He's unstoppable. The only one that can do that is you and me. It's you and me. You and I, however you want to say that. You and me. The only one that can stop him is us. But if we will be humble enough and willing enough to say, Jesus, I know what you did for me. Jesus, I know you died for my sins. Jesus, I know you suffered on that cross for me. It was for me that you died. And for the rest of the world, of course. But taking it personally, it was for me that you died on the cross. And Lord, I know as the scripture teaches me, that angel came and rolled that stone away and sat upon it. And I know, God, you walked out of that tomb. Holy, pure, glorified. And I know, Lord God, that, you have, that, 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 that nothing that man or society can do to stop you. And Lord, I believe in you. And, and there are things in my life that need help. And Lord God, I just want to bring it to you tonight and give it all to you and ask for you to help me. Ask for you to touch my life and heal my life. Ask for you, Lord God, to fix, help me fix the things in my life that need to be fixed. Help me, Lord God, to have peace and to have joy and to have a, a fulfilled life with a purpose. Help me, Lord Jesus, to, to receive more of you into my heart and my mind so that my life can be blessed and that I don't have to be troubled on every side. If you have that desire tonight, she's going to sing, the altar is open for prayer. Won't you come? Anybody that wants to come, just come to Jesus. Come to the Lord. Don't be afraid. Just come to God. Let God touch you. And as, we, as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord tonight, let God help you tonight. Jesus, I preach your word tonight. And I give you, God, all the glory and honor and praise. I magnify you and thank you tonight. I worship you. And ask, God, that you will answer the prayers of anyone that will call upon you in this house. I love and appreciate you in Jesus' name.
is Lord. Aren't you glad we serve a God that is unstoppable? Amen. That he can work in our lives as we allow him to. Amen. It's a blessing to be a child of God and to serve God and to know that God loves us. Amen. Amen. And so don't, like I said, don't give up on the Lord. Just hold on stronger, right? Hold on stronger to the Lord. And with that, God bless you. For all of you to join us online as we worship God, pray you have a wonderful night. Remember our Bible study Tuesday night at 730. We'll be here, Lord willing. And if nothing goes wrong, <laughs> right? We'll be here and, um, and, and teaching the Bible study. And hey, thank God, sir. We're glad to have you out tonight. And, and it's, we're glad to have you out in church tonight. Yeah. And she gave her life to the Lord tonight. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's close the service in prayer. Father, thank you, God, for your love and mercy. I just want to give you all the praise tonight. Thank you for what you've done. I pray you'll continue to work in us as we look to you in all things. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Amen. God bless.